stress, an animator's worst nightmare. Not only are there just a ton of intricacies that you have to get right, but it absolutely kills your render times, if you can render at all. I, like many of you out there, have had enough. It's time to take a stand against the grass menace. Time to make our grassy dreams a reality. I searched all across the internet for solutions, and I ended up doing an analysis of Disney's How to Train Your Dragon movies and the Blender Foundation's Cosmos Laundromat, and I'm going to teach it all to you today. But first some theory. One, there are only two types of grass. Some of you may say, no, but what about all the different kinds of grass in real life? The length, the shape, the color. And to that I say, wrong. Those aren't deciding factors. Why? They don't make the scene harder to animate and render. The one thing that really matters is how tall the grass is. It's either short or tall. Tall grass is more difficult because there's no excuse for why it wouldn't blow around in the wind. And on top of that, they'll need a higher poly count to be believable. Think about it. Grass isn't very strong, and even on the stillest of days there's still some wind, so you're gonna get at least a little movement. Short grass is pretty low to the ground. Unless there's either not a lot going on in the scene or there's a motivated source of wind, it'll be okay to leave it still. 2. There are three types of shots, and each can be handled differently. The easiest is side shots of grass from a low angle. The key here is you can't see the top. All we need to make it believable is enough grass to make a solid wall. The second is top-down shots, where you don't get any horizon line. Sure, it's not as easy as making a wall, but you still only need the set amount of grass required to fill the screen. Nothing more, nothing less. The third and final type is the horizon shot. Not only does your grass have to hold up near the camera, but there can't be any noticeable keyword noticeable differences as it moves to the horizon. Like this clip, it'd be really hard to tell a difference if there was a real grass particles in the distance, or they just fake them. 3. This one's simple, but it makes a whole world of difference. Either it has wind, or it doesn't. Making a few blades blow around the wind really isn't a big deal, but when it comes to making a whole field blow around, that's when we're talking heavy on the render times, and that's if we can render it all. So what did I find, and what's the best way to do grass? Personally, I'm really only interested in getting that stylized, animated look you see on big animated movies, but this stuff is important for all types. Turns out, there's a whole ton of ways to get grass. Particle systems using both object instancing and hair methods, geometry nodes, micro displacement, baked grass materials, pre-rendering images with either displacement or warping, and actually placing and rigging each blade of grass individually. As you can probably imagine, with that many options, things get confusing fast. To be totally clear, all this stuff is specific to Blender since that's all I know. I mean, I'm sure almost all of it's still applicable to other programs, so don't let that stop you, just be warned. Anyways, there really isn't one strategy that's the best all the time. There's always trade-offs between time and quality. Luckily, a lot of them are actually totally acceptable in high-quality animations, and even when I was trying really hard to spot them, I kept losing focus and having to remind myself to pay attention to the grass and not the rest of the beautiful animation. And now is the part where I tell you what to use and where, so here goes nothing. The easiest way to do grass is using fake grass materials. These things can be found online on most texture sites, and all you do is hook the maps up to your principal BSDF and voila! You have okay grass. It's quick, it's easy, it gets the job done. The downsides are you can't make it blow in the wind, and it looks kind of flat to the ground, but if you don't care that much, go for it. I mean, look at this scene. I'm not 100% sure that it's supposed to be grass, but it sure looks like it to me and they used a grass texture. Clearly it doesn't hurt the scene at all, it actually makes it a whole lot easier because they can just put the map down and not worry about it. Next on the list is micro displacement. Sorry EV users, this is a cycles only option. Then again, you probably wouldn't care since your render times are so much faster anyways. But yeah, just tell cycles to displace bits of the ground upwards. You can't make it wave in the wind, but instead of being flat on the ground, this sticks straight up. To be totally honest, I don't think I'd ever want to use this in a close up situation. What displacement would be really good for is to complement fake grass textures around the edges of things. You can't use it everywhere because it needs more geometry to work, and that just slows things down for not much benefit. With those two out of the way, we can talk about the tools you need to make upper end animations. So pre-rendered images. That's right, you heard me. If you render out a still image of a tall, remember, tall patch of grass, then displace or warp it, you can make it look like you have a good bit of grass blowing in the wind with very little geometry. It's not a perfect solution though, since it's just an image. You can only use it in scenes where it's either pretty good distance away, or there's not a lot of side-to-side -side camera motion. A bit of an edge case, but still super useful. Anyways, in a scene like this one, where you have grass like that really tall stuff in the midground, you can totally get away with some image planes. Okay, so on the flip side, you can always place, rig, and animate each blade individually. Obviously, you get a lot more control over your scene, but it can get time consuming and fast. Not to mention, even if you did manage to do a whole field, you'd still be hurting on render times. So why on earth would you ever do such a thing? Well, 
Maybe you have a whole bunch of grass already done, but now you need some of it to interact with something else in the scene. Now, how are you going to do that? I know there's no way I'd be redoing all that grass just to move a couple blades. Just hand animate some grass and that's all people need to see. You'd be surprised how convincing it is. I mean, take this clip for example. If you hand animated just those blades that got hit, you could skip all the other dynamics. Geometry nodes is sort of mixed. I've seen a lot of people using it to instance grass. Please don't do that. Let me explain. When you instance objects to points in geometry nodes, all those objects are just that. Instances. Instances come with a whole lot of optimizations that make them faster than just having thousands of that object in the scene. Up until this point you're fine, but you probably won't be happy with the fact that all your grass blades are at the same shape. Whether you just want to bend them a little or you want to add wind, you'll end up realizing those instances and you know what that means? All that optimization? Gone. You could go for full instance rotations, but that's the most you should do. I'm not saying that you can't use geometry nodes for this. There are certainly effects that work better. Or maybe you have a small amount of grass and it doesn't matter. What I am saying is that you should use geometry nodes with spoiler, Blender's new hair system. Before we get to that, we still need to talk about using particle systems to instance objects. It's the best way to get realistic grass in Blender. Similar to geometry nodes, since you can use weight paint to describe where you want your grass, but where geometry nodes needs to realize those instances to deform them, the particle system has hair dynamics that let you create wind, add variation, and even react to the environment. Though you might be better off hand animating those parts, it depends. So take it as my advice to you on what you should and I will do. The hair system is the best way to do most stylized grass in Blender. I'm talking your character is in the middle of a grassy field and you need that grass to hold up. This is the way to do it. Notice I said stylized. Any grass on a large scale should only have enough variation to look natural. I'm not saying that some won't be bigger or taller, and I'm not saying that there'll never be any weeds. What I am saying is that they'll be placed strategically to pull or push the viewer's eye and help you tell your story. This is the best way to do stylized grass because it's even more optimized than object instancing. The blades of grass aren't even real geometry. They have all the hair dynamics available to them, so it's super easy to make it all move in the wind. And last but not least, you get all of Blender's new hair system. And let me tell you, this thing is worth its weight in gold for this sort of thing. You can do things like make some grass longer, shorter, sparser, or thicker. You can even use geometry nodes to make different systems of grass that maybe have a kink to the side or they bend away from an object or even just be a little noisier. And on top of that, you still have hair dynamics. While I was working on this video, I tried to render 150,000 blades of parent grass on the screen at the same time, and it only took half a gig of memory. Let's see you do that with object instancing and geometry nodes. So let's talk strategy. You can't just brute force your way through every grass scene. It'd take forever, not to mention it'd be super expensive. Then how do you render a lot of grass? The answer is you don't, at least not really. It's your story, your animation, your scene, your shot. You are in control here. You can set everything up to make your job at the very least simple, if not easy. Don't go making a ton of crazy shots where there's a ton of things going on, or you have to render an entire windy field of tall grass. Don't get me wrong, you can have one or two of those, but even big animation studios with tons of resources still save them for pivotal moments in the story. So if your shot doesn't have to be a certain way, which it probably doesn't, avoid shooting horizon shot, using tall grass, having wind, dynamics, or even just replace grass with other stuff. Instead of going insane and trying for a shot with grass to the horizon, sometimes you can make it a top-down view. More frequently, you'll want to keep some sort of side on view. The easiest way to do that is to have your landscape reach an edge or hill where you can render lower quality background footage behind it. If the ground has to be flat, you can do a fall off of quality as you get farther away. Don't use the wind after a certain distance or render more grass as child particles instead of parents that have to be simulated. If you're like me, just make sure to tell yourself not to feel bad about it. Big animation studios do it. No one's gonna notice, I had to try really hard to notice it. Also, your motion blur and depth of field will help you out and make the details a little less noticeable. And finally, as long as you do a decent job and back your scenery up with good animation and composition, the viewer won't even be looking at your grass. They might give it a quick glance and say, looks green, and then they're back to the action. They almost certainly won't be picking your work apart. So yeah, I'd say it's a pretty solid overview of how to render grass in Blender. I want to teach people how to animate like big animation studios like Disney and Pixar, so check out my Patreon. You get early videos, my models, rigs, and a bunch of other stuff there. Also, I'm kind of on a grass kick, not gonna lie, so there's almost definitely gonna be more case-specific and scene walkthrough type tutorials for grass coming your way, along with a bunch of other cool stuff. And with that, get out there and animate something awesome.